Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit for those that are new about your story and how you overcame something that was seemingly like, I almost want to say trying to take you out of this planet in a way, take you off the planet. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm probably not supposed to, I wasn't supposed to be here still. <laughs> um, yeah. And actually I was, I found out from one of my clearings that that was one of the things I was supposed to like leave the planet when I was 46. But I, oh. we changed all that. <laughs> um, so what was happening was I was just having multiple car accidents. I mean, one time I had five in like within two years of car accidents. And I had them, I started, I guess, when I was, it was a bike accident. And then when I was 16, I was in a very serious car accident where I just, I put my seatbelt on the last minute, just intuitively, like if I don't do this, I would have went through yeah. the windshield. Oh. oh. And then I had Another one where I actually did go through the windshield, um, two windshields actually, and then hit a fence and hit a house. And I was sort of, wow. everyone thought that I was, you know, not alive. But, um, and then there was a big rumor going around that I died. <laughs> Everyone's seeing me going, oh, I thought you died. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was that one that was quite intense. That was, uh, I had a head injury from that one and a lot of physical body injuries. And then I just continued to, you know, track these car accidents, it kept attracting this attractor pattern of, um, okay. it was I, I, sort of a victim consciousness that I was carrying, like, go ahead, hit me, mm. go ahead, hit me. I was never, um, you know, driving usually in this, con I was usually the passenger or, or I, if I was driving, somebody hit me, right? And it was really funny because I'd, I'd be driving with my friends in their car and people would almost be hitting me and they're like, what, what's up with you? <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. You're tracking all this energy, right? <clears throat> so I needed to clear, and I needed to actually do some forgiveness work around that as well. And um, that was the deep, deep work. And um, and then I shifted that energy. But what I realized was, it got to the point where um, I couldn't even move. Like I was so physically, my body was like shutting down. I had fibromyalgia. All my joints were totally like stiff. They used to call me the Tin Woman, and I, I was, you know, I was even afraid to go out of my house. I was just like so me. done with life, right? And I was like lying in bed all the time. And I, one time I was lying on the floor, and I, uh, I had to get up and get my daughter a Christmas present. It was really like pathetically sad. <laughs> and I got dressed and kind of walked over to the mall like a Tin Woman, like <laughs> like couldn't move my head. You know, I was just, um, and so I was. Uh, started to go like for little walks and stuff and I was realizing that I was carrying a lot of negative thoughts in my mind right and it, okay. they were just sort of you know you know coming in and coming in and um, reinforcing all this negativity right in my body and I wasn't speaking up and standing up for myself I was uh, like allowing all this to happen to me and I wasn't you know doing anything about it right because f first of all I didn't feel like I had it uh, I had a voice. I didn't feel like I had a voice because in my family lineage of all the women in my life, nobody had a voice, right? And I watched them all, right? And then one day I was sitting there and I looked up at my, um, you know, where you have all the pictures and stuff. And my mother had just passed away about um, a few months after that. And um, she, about, three, about three months after my mom passed away, I looked up and there was a picture of my mom. And then there was a picture of my uh aunt who was my godmother and she had died six months before her and then a picture of my grandmother and I went 
oh my god, oh my god, these are, these are all abused women, right? And mm. I realized, oh my god, I'm next, right? Mm. Because I I was an abused woman as well, right? And I just thought, you know, I can't, I can't do, I have to change this. And then it sort of hit me. It was like almost like this epiphany moment. I was like. I'm supposed to change this for everybody in my lineage because oh my this is why I'm going through all this stuff. Like, and they're really my ancestors are really, you know, giving it to me, <laughs> like trying to knock me into like, you know, change, right? Yes. Like, how, how far do you want to go, girl? Right? <laughs> and <laughs> um, and then I, I did a session with um, some of my girlfriends that do this work as well, and they were, um, you know, getting. They said you got to get grandma off your back, right? And I was very attached to my grandmothers, right? Um, one of them died when I was 10, and the other one had died, you know, when I was a bit older. But I, it still was such a big loss to me because I was so connected to them. Like, little girls are always very connected to their grandmothers. Um, even sometimes more than their mother, you know. Um, so what happened was um, my grandmother, she had died, and she was um, living in my room. Like, before she died, she was in my bedroom. And and I used to bring her all these trays of pills and medications every day. And here, Grandma, here, Grandma. So I started was doing that, right? I was taking all this stuff the doctors were giving me, and oh, we, there's no hope for you. And here, just take this pill, and and you, you might as well just you know volunteer for people that are worse than you, like people that are have, are in wheelchairs and things, and then you'll you'll have some you'll feel good about yourself, right? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, I guess that would work, you know, and that would be helpful, but. Um, to me, there was there was just like this. This has got to be more than this because I, you know, different times in my life, I'd healed things in my body, you know, miraculously. Like after I had my daughter, I was supposed to have surgery, and um, three days later, I I did some hypnosis and I went in, and the doctor goes, you know, there's nothing there. There's no need for mm. surgery, right? Mm. So I kept yeah, going so back to that. Yeah, that you'd point. healed before. Okay. Yeah, of remembering that 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 does happen. It's it happens. This happens, right? So um, I had so many layers of. Um, you know, garbage piled on top of me and all these beliefs and all these belief systems that were from my ancestors and all these belief systems that were from the collective and and feeling disempowered as a woman, you know? Yeah. And um, so the, my girlfriend's all, like, I could see, I was in this room and I could see my grandmother and and they were taking her off my back and I was crying my head off because oh. I was like, I love my grandma, I love my grandma. And, and oh. the, the girlfriend's like, you know, she's like, no, we got to get her off you. <laughs> <laughs> so they did, and um, it was so it's just such an emotional moment. Like it was intense. Wow. Like now, now when wow. I now when I clear people's, people's grandmas, I just you know I just like that, right? <laughs> but this was wow. kind of like you know a slower process. And after that, I started you know reading off all the medications I was on, and I just started to um, every time something would come up, I, I, I'd say that's that you know I don't need this thought. I'm going to give it to God or whatever, right? I'm going to delete this out of my my body. You know, this is no longer serving me, right? And, and to and becoming to, aware of... Yeah, go ahead. And I, I want to talk about the deleting a little bit, too, because I know we're getting a bunch yeah. of questions there. But you said to become aware. Um, become, becoming aware of what is weakening your energy, right? So you have to you have to feel in for what the weakness is. So say a thought comes into your mind or something is triggering you, right? You get a trigger from something. Like so you stop instead of just going, "Oh, I'm just going to push that down and <laughs> yeah, and push that push yeah. that out." And my daughter just wrote a song about that. It was really good. Um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to feel this, right? So I, I but I don't have to feel it for like you know hours and weeks and days. Some people feel things for 20 years Correct. or longer. <laughs> um, so you just need to recognize. So you become your own. You become your own master of your own body. So you, you become a watcher of yourself and a witness to your experience. So instead of like always looking out at everybody else, what what are they doing? Um, you know, oh look what she's doing. Oh look what they're doing. You know, you 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 look at what you're doing, right? <laughs> and how you're relating to this situation. Is this is this my stuff? Is this not my stuff? Um, you know, how can I? You know, because sometimes we're not self-aware, right, about how, what we're doing, right, or how we're acting when we're stuck in it that that wheel of going over, you know, these thoughts all the time, right? Our little story of our yeah. life, right? But we need, yeah. we can change that story of our life. So we need to um, really have the tools to go, okay, this is, oh, look at me, I'm doing this again. Oh, you know, let's delete that, delete that. And then sometimes you need to recognize it, you need to acknowledge what that is, 
and you need to feel it for a second or two. So you're like feeling that emotion, like, oh, yeah, that's it. it's like almost more like a sensation or something in your body that's burning or pulling or tugging. And, and usually you'll get like a, an image of something that'll come up, right? And that's how you use your intuition to, to work wow. with this um, energy. And you'll, you'll, so you'll acknowledge and then you'll delete it, right? So you, you actually need to bring it up sort of quickly and then tr- delete it really fast. So it's a process of doing the work, but it's like, because we are binary, binary computers, we're all um, encoded with everything that we've ever learned in our lifetime is stored in all the cells of our body and all our memories through our lifetime, through our past lifetimes, through our ancestors. And, you know, ever since we we're born, right, we're, we're like little programs. So I'm getting programmed now like a baby from birth to um, five is t- it's just a total blank slate of getting ready to get programmed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you got to really, you know, watch what you're doing with your children too, right? Um, so getting really in tune with that. And so you become more like <clears throat> the watcher and you're like, you're more in the still point energy. You're just observing things. You keep going back to your do I say to your midline because that's where you just hold that energy. It's like it's, it's centered, it's balanced, it's stabilized, right? And you use your mind for a second or two to put um, the energy, um, download it into your midline or you can delete it out of your midline. So if you want to delete something out of your midline, <clears throat> you use your, your mind for a second and delete that, right? And then if you want to uh, bring something else in, you want to strengthen yourself to something, Say you see something that you really like or the way somebody looks or this thing you want to get or, you know, anything. Um, and then you, you strengthen yourself to that. So you make yourself strong that your, your energy is as strong as that energy and you're connected to that energy and, and that's going to be in your, in your existence, in your field. Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barzani, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the U.S. Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now daily where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're going to get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.